Welcome to MVS vs. AES, the show where I spot the differences between arcade Neo Geo games and their home console equivalent. For those uninitiated in SNK lore, the AES, formerly the Advanced Entertainment System, was a bold experiment catering to the most devoted gamers with money to burn. Rather than paying $50 to play a watered-down arcade port on weaker hardware, you'd pay an exorbitant $150 to own the arcade game with very few compromises. SNK would often make major tweaks to AES releases in the hopes of adding greater value to anyone willing to drop $150 on a single game. But due to the astronomical cost of the system and time making these games irrelevant, these often interesting differences remain mostly undocumented on YouTube. Thanks to a little encouragement from one of my fans, I decided to shine a light on them in the hopes of showing an interesting chapter of gaming history overlooked by many. Before I get specific, most of the games only got minuscule modifications so they'd function and provide some replay value. Difficulty selection and limited continues are universal throughout the AES library. I will not be covering games where those are the only changes. We don't need dozens of copy-pasted videos. I'm here to spotlight games with more elaborate changes, like Magician Lord. Released by Alpha Denshi in April 1990, a fairly standard side-scrolling platformer built to showcase the power of the Neo Geo. This was the first title in the hardware's library to have two separate releases for the arcade and the home market. If you're looking at MAME's game list, NGM is the arcade version and NGH is the home version. Why would Alpha Denchi change this when they were content to give buyers arcade perfect ports before? Because they were the first to realize they could implement an epic story in their game without interference from arcade operators that need a cash influx to keep their business afloat. There are three major differences in console Magician War, all based around optimizing the game for home play. The first occurring as soon as you hit the start button. Instead of jumping straight into the game, you treated to a two minute animated introduction flushing out the land of Cadassus and the backstory of the Magician Lord, complemented by a song keeping pace with the story's tone. Arcade operators wouldn't be too pleased if you got to read a free fantasy novel every time a new game was started. Once you're in-game, difference number two is unmissable. Your health bar. The home version gives you two extra hit points making chunks of the game significantly easier. Speedrun tactics, such as wading your way through lava to skip a chunk at a first level, are considerably less risky to do with an extra point of health, warranting the two versions be split for competition. The last and least desirable change to some is to the way the game punishes you for death. Alpha Denshi were concerned there'd be longevity complaints if your $150 game was over in 35 minutes. So instead of restarting you close to where you died, the home version checkpoints you like R-Type, oftentimes making you redo up to half the level. Sometimes this results in health power-ups being readily available on restart, while dying in the middle of stage 6 might get you stuck there for a long time as power-ups become scarcer. At least you're given infinite continues so you can try a checkpoint as many times as needed until you succeed. Shockingly respectful of a player's time by 1990 standards. I mentioned limited continues were universal throughout the AES library, but that wouldn't be established until Ghost Pilots one year later. SNK and Alpha were still trying to figure out replay value outside of the scoring systems that already existed in these games. On that note, that concludes the first episode of MVS vs. AES. If this video gets at least 200 views, 
I will be happy to make this a weekly feature from this day forth. If you found the subject fascinating, share the video around, subscribe, and leave a like to support the show. Any bit of support makes these deep dives into gaming history a little more worthwhile. And until next time, stay frosty.